ZH firm, we're rolling. Keep that firm, we're rolling. They come through rain and wind and weather. My ZH getting better. Wishing my ZH. How does the focus limiter actually work? All right, well, we go down to the pencil menu, focus menu, down to A16. And in here, we have the capacity to turn it on or off, as well as limit range. And this is actually showing you what you're looking at. And you have two ways to do this. The first way is using the dial on the back, which is your shutter dial by default. And you can just literally set it up that way. And the aperture, the default aperture dial on the front, and that gives you the long distance. Now, something's cool. What do you think happens if the numbers try and overlap? Well, there you go. Nikon's thought of that, and they're giving you a 10-centimeter buffer if you try and make them overlap. So they've covered that one. Super smart. An even better way that I imagine most people will use is you can literally use the shutter button. So that's me just pressing the shutter button and saying, that's my distant, and then the AF on button, that's my close. You simply press OK, and they become your limits. They're the limits. And if I try and focus further away, it will not do it. As you can see, it's like, no, I'm not going to do that. So that's absolutely fantastic. But what if you want to turn that off really quickly without having to go into menus? Well, Nikon have thought of that as well. We go here into custom controls. And in my case, I am going to assign the exposure compensation button. I don't really use it for anything because I shoot fully manually. And just look at all the buttons that you can customize. Absolutely so many. Absolutely fantastic. Anyway, back to that exposure compensation button. We go in there and then now we go and find focus limiter. But just have a look. Like if you've never looked at customizing your buttons before, there is just so many functions that you can assign to certain buttons. There's just an enormous amount of customization available. Anyway, there's the focus limiter there. And now it's assigned to that button and you can just see it's super easy for me to turn it off. Okay, so we've turned the limiter on. That's in range. Fabulous. But we want to shoot over there. Oh, we can't, we can't, it won't let us. Turn the limiter off that easy. And then we want to be limited again and we're limited. Just super fast. Now I can see this being a bank and where you press this one, two, three times and you actually get a bank of three different focused limited areas. So one focus limit one could be one to two meters, two could be 10 to 15 meters, and three could be 15 to 30 meters, and you can just fly through them that quickly and then go back to nothing where you get everything. This is an absolutely, from my perspective, just a really well thought out feature that now makes every single lens that you own focus limited. And that's cool because most of our lenses do not have focus limiter switches on them and they certainly do not have customizable focus limiting. It's set to the hardware of the button and that might be zero to six meters or zero to three meters, that's it. This allows you to have whatever you want. And as I said, I can see in the future that you might be able to have multiples. Just so brilliant. And the fact that you can just change between being limited and not limited at the press of a button, I would say that's taking about probably just shy of a second to be able to swap between modes. Extremely fast, extremely elegant. Now, because this is a beta version of 3.0, we don't have the Golden Master, the release version, out yet. I believe it's coming soon. I did try to test this on F-mount lenses. A viewer asked me on this Z8 firmware video, will it work on F-mount lenses? And I tried that out, and at the time, it did not. Now, I don't know if that's because this is a beta or this is how it will be for the final version. I kind of think it's fair enough. The Z-mount now has been around for seven years. We have extraordinary compatibility between F-mount lenses and Z cameras as it stands. And it's simply possible that the technology is not there, especially with lenses that don't have electronic coupling. Now, maybe, maybe the more modern lenses with electronic coupling will be able to do this. 
I will test that further when the full version, the non-beta version, comes out. Does it work with third-party lenses and other adapted lenses? Well, again, I will try that when it comes out. But the fact that we've got almost 50 lenses, I'm sure it'll be close to 50 lenses by the end of this year that can use this. They've all suddenly got a focus limiter switch, and now it's a customizable focus limiter switch. What a great advancement and and this is something that I think is useful to basically every photographer, every use case. Absolutely amazing. Such a simple thing, but such a big thing. And these are the sort of things that I think we're going to continue to see roll out via firmware basically on an ongoing basis. If Nikon can think of it and they can implement it, well, I don't see any reason why it won't be added and a couple of other discoveries that I've made with Focus Limiter on this pre-release version of firmware 3.0 for the Z8. Firstly, if you remove a lens, then it resets and you have to set the limit again. I think that makes sense because lenses can vary so much. The second thing is if you keep the same lens on, but you turn the camera on and off, the settings remain so the settings only default back to zero when you change lens. I think for a first version implementation of the focus limiter feature, I think this is really elegant, really well thought out. My only further thought that can come in the future is to be able to have a bank of, say, three or five ranges that you just want to jump in between. Otherwise, this is awesome. I'd love to know your thoughts about firmware 3.0 for the Z8. I do continue to believe that features like this, the focus limiter, will come to XP7 cameras. I would be very surprised if it doesn't over time. I 100% think it will come to the professional level cameras. Now, the only caveat that I might add to that is Z9, maybe it's too long in its life cycle now. People talk about it being the flagship and, you know, why doesn't it have all the features? Well, from my perspective, sure, it is the flagship, but it is a flagship that at the end of this year will be four years into its life cycle. And I do ask the question, not from any particular viewpoint, but something to contemplate. How long do we expect Nikon to keep updating the Z9 and keeping it up to date? Now, of course, personally, I own a Z9. I would love to see features like pixel shift and focus limiter come to the Z9. But of course, when it comes to the Z9 and the Z8, well, the Z8 is still probably only about halfway through its life cycle. And of course, the Nikon Z9 is certainly heading towards the back end of its life cycle. Does it have another six months, another year, another two years? I don't know. But any way you cut it, as it heads towards four years, the time that's left is less than the time that has passed. So yes, I would love to see these features and other features that have arrived in the Z8 coming to cameras like the Z9, the Z63, the Z52, ZF, and maybe even the Z52. And in real terms, why not? In economic and marketing terms, well, you never know what the decisions are that they will make. Anyway, everybody, I'd love to know your thoughts about this firmware, please let me know in the comments below. It's been so good to see you. And if this is your first time here, I'd love to see you again. So please do subscribe, please share, and please like. All right. Bye for now.